Hello everyone, I'm pastry chef Rohi Bimani and I'm glad to see you here. On popular demand, I am back on the page of Academy of uh, Pastry Arts India and I'm super excited to be here yet again. Guys, thank you for sending in so much love. I can't tell you, last time when I did the recipe, the number of feedbacks that I'm getting. Uh, you know, y'all have actually gone ahead, y'all have tried the recipe and y'all are sending me screenshots. Y'all are posting it. Uh, you're tagging me, you're tagging APCA India and it is so amazing, you know, because this kind of feedbacks really, really, really motivates me. So, um, back again on popular demand, I am here and uh, we wait for a few people to join in and while people are joining in, let me just tell you a brief story of what I do and, uh, you know, how I got into egg free baking. So, um, I currently, I own a studio by the name of Coco Cottage uh, in Andheri Lokhanwala and I teach anything and everything to do with egg-free baking, right from your macros, meringues, entremets, you name it and I do it. But a lot of people are inquisitive, you know, that um, Rohi, how did you get into this? You know, because the demand is so high. So um, this, uh, my journey began almost uh, more than eight years ago. I did my hotel management, uh, I took Mumbai University and after, after my graduation, I traveled abroad. I trained under a lot of master chefs. Um, only to come back to India and understand that, that a lot of people were not comfortable taking eggs in their desserts. So whenever I would put up a dessert to my friends, they would be like, uh, yeah, this looks really delicious, but uh, is it eggless? And I would constantly wonder, why is this eggless, you know? So I contacted one of my chefs and uh, I said, chef, you know what, uh, I, I really, you know, in India the market is for eggless, so can you help me do this recipe eggless? And uh, he looked up, he looked down. Then, uh, then he's like, eggless, you mean less of egg? I said, no, I, I mean no egg. So he's like, okay, you mean egg free? And I was like, yes, I mean egg free. So ever since then, I have uh, been calling this egg free and not eggless. And um, I went ahead, um, uh, I developed a lot of recipes, right, from your egg-free sponges to um, your tarts to uh, your uh, meringues to your macarons and then came entremets and more and more complex uh, desserts. So, so that, that's how my journey has been and it's been wonderful and I feel absolutely honored to share this with you all and what makes me more happy is that you guys are actually going ahead and doing it, you know. So thank you so much. And uh, I would really like to thank uh, ABCA for having me here. Uh, it's absolutely an honor and I'm, I'm glad that in popular demand I'm back. So guys, uh, without wasting any time, let's start off with the recipe. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, if you've set up everything because we've already put the recipe ahead uh, of time. So give me a thumbs up quickly guys, so we can start. Okay, so here, let me tell you what do I have. I have 200 grams of milk made, okay. I have around 120 grams of flour, which is your metha, your regular metha, okay. Then I have 30 grams of pista powder. What I have done is I've just taken pista, I haven't roasted, I haven't done anything, just taken pista and give it a blitz, that's it, okay. And uh, even if you don't have like a fine powder and if it's coarse or it's chunky, don't worry, I just feel that whenever the nuts are more chunky or they give you better flavor and they have the different crunch in the cake. Okay, next we have baking powder and baking soda. So this is around half teaspoon of baking powder and one four teaspoon of baking soda. One very important thing about this product is that uh, I like to use Bluebird brand. Uh, very specifically, I'm mentioning this yet again that I use Bluebird because any other brand, uh, the powder is too high. So if you're looking at the Wickfield or something, it has double action. So if, just in case if you're using Wickfield, then you need to use half the quantity, which means in this recipe, if it is half teaspoon of baking powder, if you're using Wickfield, you'll use one fourth teaspoon of baking powder, okay? And baking soda is just normal because right now due to the lockdown, you don't get all the brands available. So guys, just make do with what you have, okay? And the ingredients that I have laid down is very simple and easy to get, so it's not very complicated. And next we have Amul butter, 100 grams of Amul butter salted. I always use salted uh, butter for my dessert because I just feel it gives you a better flavor, a better flavor to your sweetness. And then I have rose water and I have uh, 
uh, your 60 grams of soda water. Now why grams are not ml? Uh, because I like to measure my liquid also again in grams because it just helps you to standardize everything makes it very 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 easy so that is soda water but I've just kept this here for demonstration if you were doing it back home just pop it out just use it when you need it and push it back again you don't want the fizz to go what we need here is the fizz in the soda but because it's a demonstration I have to lay it out okay next we have some pistachios sliced pistachios and um, uh, some dried rose petals. This is just for the garnish. So guys, let's get started with the cake. Do, get, do I get a thumbs up? What's happening guys? Yeah, okay, on the other side of the camera is my husband, uh, Kasim Rokhandwala. So um, he will be the one who will be reading out all the questions to me and I will be baking along. Okay, so guys, if you all have the ingredients ready, start. Okay, one very important point that I had told you last time as well is that I want chilled butter. You see, this is so chilled. And again, I get asked, why chilled butter? It's because your chilled butter helps you to sort of emulsify this really well and you have a spongy cake. You, you no longer have um, a flat cake, you know, so you, you need that aviation in the cake and hence you need chilled butter. So guys, what you can do is I just keep it, I just pop it in the fridge for some time just before using it. So in, I have 200 grams of milk made and 100 grams of Let's go, okay. And start. Can you hear my blades are finding it difficult to move, which means the butter is nice and chilled. Okay, one more thing. Whenever you guys are working with egg free, don't panic. You know, I've known a lot of people who would just panic, you know, just because they know it's egg free. Just be very relaxed, treat it like you're regularly baking it and you will fall in love with this recipe. Alright, so we'll continue. Now see this, go slow. Okay. Ensure that all the lumps of your butter is melted. You see the milk, the sound is different. nice and smooth I hope you all can see right now now the procedure is very simple all right to this I'm going to add my dry ingredients so you have flour which is your maida pistachio and I will add baking powder and baking soda okay what you can do is just give this a mix If you're not doing it back home, you can just weigh everything in one bowl and work because uh, you really don't want to remove too many things and work. Right? So this is like a one bowl recipe. Okay. So once this is ready, what we're going to do is now add in all the dry ingredients. Okay. Now what you're going to do is just cut and fold. Cut and fold. Have a look. Cut and fold. Cut and fold. Cut and fold. Cut and fold. Okay. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add soda water. Ensure that you're using fresh soda water which has the fizz. And next goes in is rose water. Okay. Now guys, you do have an option of adding green color if you wish to. Okay. Um, if you use good quality pistachios and uh, you know the smaller green quality that you get which gives out good color you really don't have to do any of that okay right guys so have a look at the consistency it's nice and thick okay you want me to show the consistency again 
nice and thick. Okay. Guys, if you have missed anything about the video, this video is going to be there live for 24 hours. And uh, post that, uh, we will be saving this video for future use. So don't worry, okay? You all can refer to this video next time as well. Um, moving on next, we have our half uh, six inch tin light right here. Okay. Just let me get a few things sorted before I start. Right. So, yeah. And then we have this tin. I want you to see the consistency of this. Okay. Before we go ahead with this, I want you to preheat your oven at 180 degrees Celsius. And we will be baking this at 160 degrees Celsius. Okay. So I want your oven to be extremely hot when I put in this cake inside. But once I start baking the cake, I want it at 160 degrees Celsius. You'll bake it for 35 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. Guys, I have uh, heard a lot of y'all inquiring about ovens, inquiring about um, you know how to operate and all. Each oven needs to be handled differently. You know, it's uh, sort of it has the characteristics of its own. I feel you know. Sometimes if it's running too hot from top, then you bake it in the bottom. If it's running too hot from bottom, you bake it in the top rack. And suppose if it's absolutely fine, then you bake it in the middle rack. Okay, that's how we handle. So what we do is we always bake a small batch see how it reacts and then we choose where we want to add you know and also um, older the oven the more hotter it runs uh, you know so so you need to understand these things and as to how to handle that once you have got that and once you've got the right recipe you will you will just do very well for yourself okay next what i'm going to do is without wasting any time i'm going to add this lovely cake batter okay to the tin and we are not going to tap nothing no guys just easy okay just i can already smell this i wish y'all were on the side of the camera um to to really know you know what this feels like okay that's it i'm not going to tap nothing i hope y'all can see small chunks of pistachios right inside really yum it's a very thick batter it's absolutely beautiful. So this goes in for baking at 160 degrees Celsius for 35 to 40 minutes. It can even go up to 45 minutes. Don't worry. All you have to do is put the toothpick right in the center of the cake and check. If it's wet, bake it for some time more. If it's not, get it out and cool it off. So that's how you bake this cake. What we will do is um, I will take in a few questions right now. And uh, post that, uh, we will just do the icing. And um, I'll show you how to decorate your cake. So guys, can we have your questions now? Why do you use soda water? Why did I use soda water? Okay. Now, if you see this recipe, uh, it has butter, it has milk made. Okay, I have chosen a different medium right now. Okay, I have uh, chosen uh, baking soda and baking powder. But you know what? This recipe goes very dense. It has nut flour as well. So sort of to push it up and to get better air pockets. What I've done is I've added soda water, so it just gives it that push. Is there a replacement for milk milkmaid? There is, uh, not in this recipe. The entire recipe or the body of the recipe changes completely. Okay, right now we're not adding any sugar because we're getting all the sweetness from milkmaid. So there are multiple recipes uh, that you can do even without milkmaid if you're not a big fan of milkmaid. Uh, and uh, just the uh, uh, since you've got this point, I would love to say that I want you to use Amul milk made very specifically. Sorry, I want you to use Nestle um, milk made very specifically uh, because it is nice and thick. The Amul methylinate that you get is very thin, so I, I don't want you to use this. I want you to use this. Okay. So, someone's asked, can we use rose essence? You can. Um, so, if you're using rose essence, you just limit yourself to one or two drops or three drops because you know you don't want rose to be overpowering you just want it like uh, it to be like a subtle uh, hint you know in the background any substitute for milkmaid um i just spoke right now that the entire composition of the recipe changes so uh, yep if uh, if we can i don't know if we can we, we would like to do one more recipe so uh, let's see how that goes okay will this have a sponge cake texture or a tea cake texture this will have a good sponge cake texture. Okay. 
Can I make this cake in convection mode of microwave and what's the temperature? Uh, you know what, this one uh, you can, you will have to see it for yourself. Um, but I really don't recommend, you know, um, do it in an OTG if possible, please. Because, uh, because it has a very, uh, it has different pressure points if you go to see this recipe. Um, baking is one of them because you're preheating at 180 and then baking at 160. So if you can somehow manage it, uh, then great, go ahead. Why didn't you tap the baking tin to remove the air bubbles? Because I don't want to remove the air bubbles. I wanted all there. I wanted to rise really well. See, sometimes no, when you when it's not needed, don't do it. Not everything needs to be tapped. Okay. So y'all, what happens is no, we we live with a lot of perceptions. I feel you know that this is the rule. This is how it needs to be, and this is how it needs to go. So guys, just relax. Take it easy. You see how easy this was. Like the, there were there were no. Uh, you know, move it this side, don't move it this side. It's nothing. It's it's just how you handle it. And I, I specifically feel that if you make it with a lot of love and care, any bake that you do will come out beautiful. So on that note, it's time for me to show you how this looks. Ta-da! Guys, so of course I had to bake it in advance for you uh, because, uh, come on, I have to do that, right? So you all know how this turns out. If you see, it's lovely golden brown. I love that. Oh, you know, I love it when these cakes are like nice and brown. Okay, so this has a beautiful texture, and uh, it's it's been cooling off since a while. Okay, it was quite easy for me to remove, as you see, and it has a lovely dough, right? So what we can do now is we can go ahead with the icing. I've already uh, given the icing recipe, and. Uh, Right now, uh, I need a plate beneath this uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is the icing which I have got ready. So I've added, uh, I've taken half the quantity, that is your icing sugar, uh, your uh, lemon juice and rose water. And still if you feel you've not achieved the right consistency, you can just add uh, maybe like a teaspoon of water and just mix it well. And uh, what I've done is I've just mixed everything and put it in the piping bag. And we will just glaze this and on top of that we add uh, pistachio and uh, we will add some dried rose petals so I hope uh, you're all excited for this okay let's see how this goes okay cut it off the table top right. Right. can I have the plate thank you Alright, I hope you all can see this. Yep, yeah, it's visible. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start from the center and we'll keep pouring, we'll keep pouring, okay? Right, and let it drip. Okay. Wow, it looks yum. So guys, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to leave this to set right for a bit and then I'm gonna click a lovely picture and show you the texture of this one and uh, yeah and I'll share the picture with you guys what I'm gonna do is just add some pistachios yeah. and doesn't this look lovely so yes, here is your rose pistachio cake guys, go ahead, give it a try, click loads of pictures, tag me at Shafuhi Bimani, tag APCA India and we will be more than happy to see what you've created. So take care, bye bye, keep baking. What was question?